I don't even have to ask you because I'm pretty sure you've heard lots of stories of men from the Bible that you should model your faith after, where the scripture speaks of their faith that was exemplary. But how many men do you know about from the scripture, and I'm not talking about Pharaoh, how many men from the scripture do you know that were evil men that used to serve God, but they abandoned their faith and they were destroyed because of it? Well, with that being said, the Lord placed a subject title in my heart, and this Monday through Friday, I'm going to be having a series called Evil Men from the Bible. So make sure you subscribe and turn on your notifications so that you can be alerted every time I post a brand new video. But today is part one, day one of the series, Evil Men from the Bible. And the evil man that I want to highlight today so that we can see what he was doing, so that we can see the type of life that he lived, and so that you and I can learn not to resemble this man, because believe it or not, a lot of Christians resemble this man, and we're going to find out why many Christians resemble this man. But we're going to highlight this man today so that we can see little bits and parts of his life and so that we can learn from this man and so that we can never do the things he did. So what man am I speaking about? Today, the evil man from the Bible that I want to highlight is this, Cain, the son of Adam and Eve, the brother of Abel. Who is Cain? He was the first murderer here on earth and he had godly parents and he had a godly brother and he had an amazing pastor who was his pastor god god himself was his pastor let's find out why he's an evil man from the bible but i want to show you something from the book of jude chapter 1 verse 11 i'm not going to read all of verse 11 because i only want to read you the part where it speaks about cain but did you know hebrews chapter 11 is called the hall of faith but Jude chapter 1 verse 11 could be called the hall of shame. And Cain is mentioned in the hall of shame. And look what it says about him. Woe to them, talking about false prophets. Woe to them, for they walked in the way of Cain. If false prophets walk in the way of Cain, if people who started living by faith, but then abandoned their faith and started chasing falseness, if they walk in the way of Cain, Let's find out what it means to walk in the way of Cain. Pay attention to what Genesis chapter 4, verse 5 through 9 says. Remember, we're having this series called Evil Men from the Bible. Let's learn from the life of Cain so that we can self-examine ourselves and if we have any of these attributes in us so that we can repent of them. Look what scripture says here in Genesis chapter 4, verse 5 through 9. Cain and Abel both brought an offering to the Lord. God accepted Abel's, and we're going to find out why God accepted Abel's, but God rejected Cain's, and we're also going to find out why God rejected Cain's, but we're going to see how Cain, instead of going to the Lord, and instead of repenting of whatever it was that he needed to repent of, instead, he committed the first murder here on planet Earth. So let's read what happens right after the Lord does not accept his offering. Look what it says here, verse 5 through 9, but for Cain and his offering, he had no regard. God did not regard the offering of Cain. So Cain was very angry, and his face fell. The Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry, and why has your face fallen? If you do well, won't you be accepted? And if you do not do well, look what God tells him. This is why I said God was his pastor. God is preaching to him. He's saying, Why are you so downcast? Why is your face changing? He says, If you do well, won't you be accepted? And if you do wrong, aren't you going to be rejected? Plain and simple. God's telling Cain, Cain, look. If you bring it up the right way, I'll accept it. But you brought it up the wrong way, so I rejected it. Let's find out why God accepted Abel's and rejected Cain's. Scripture tells us. The scripture tells us that God accepted Abel's because Abel brought his offering up with faith. Knowing that God was the one that justifies him. Knowing that God was the one that makes him righteous. Knowing that everything good comes from the Lord. Knowing that even the offering that he was bringing up to God, he knew that God was the one that allowed him to have that offering. He brought it up by faith. But Cain, he didn't bring up his offering by faith. Scripture tells us that he brought the fruits of the land. Do you know what he brought his works with, his offerings with? He brought it trusted in his own works, in his own efforts. That's why God rejected the offering of Cain. Let me tell you something. Whenever you live a life by faith, trusting God as your justifier, trusting God as the one who makes you righteous, trusting in the word of God, living a life of faith. You might fail. You might stumble. You're not perfect. You're not flawless. You might still have a lot of errors, but whenever you live your life trusting in the Lord, believing in the Lord, leaning on him, trusting in him, getting your strength from him. If you fall, you repent, you stand back up. If you stumble, you call unto him, you repent, you stand back up. Whenever you live your life trusting in the Lord, let me tell you, you will always 100% be accepted by God. But whenever 
a man or a woman, starts living their life like Cain, they will always be rejected. Why? Scripture says that all our righteous deeds, without Jesus, all our righteous deeds are like filthy rags in the eyes of God. Cain brought the best of the land. He brought amazing vegetables, amazing produce from the land. But he didn't bring it up trusting God. He brought it up trusting in his own works. That's what those vegetables and produce represent. Abel brought up a little lamb. That represents Jesus Christ. Cain brought up produce. That represents the works of the flesh. Whenever you put your faith in Jesus, you will always be accepted. Whenever you put your faith in your own works, you will always be rejected. That is why you and I should never put our own faith in our own efforts, in our own works. Should we have efforts? Should we have works living for Jesus? Yes, but we should never put our trust and our hope thinking that we're righteous and we're holy by our own efforts and our own work. No, we should always put our hope and our trust in Jesus Christ. So that's what God is telling Cain. You brought it up trusting in yourself. You were rejected. Abel brought it up by faith. He was accepted. But look what he tells him here. And this is why I said that God is the pastor of Cain. God preaches to him and God tells him to be careful because sin wants to overpower Cain. And God tells him, Cain, sin wants to overpower you. Be careful. Look what he says here in verse 7. If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin is crouching at the door. Its desire is contrary to you, but you must rule over it. Do you know what God is telling Cain? Cain, I see that sin in your heart and it wants to overpower you, but you got to rule over it. God was telling Cain, you have permission to dominate, to rule over that sin. Don't let that sin dominate you. You dominate that sin. God was preaching to Cain. God was the pastor of Cain. See, a lot of times people blame the preacher. People blame the pastor. People blame the church. People blame the, the country where they live in. No. Stop blaming. Because Cain had God as his pastor. Was Cain going to blame God? God was preaching to him. God was telling him sins at his door. But let me tell you something about you and about me. God has given you free will. He tells you the truth, but he's going to let you decide. So look what Cain decides. And this is why he's an evil man from the Bible, that we should take a good look at his life, and we should learn from it, and we should separate ourselves far from his attributes. And we're going to find out what those attributes are. But look what Cain does. But Cain spoke to Abel, his brother, and when they were in the field, Cain rose up against his brother Abel and killed him. What happened? He rose up against his brother and killed him. And then you know what God says? God asks Cain, where is your brother Abel? And Cain gets upset with God. Cain gets prideful and arrogant with God and becomes a big mouth with God. And you know what he tells God? I don't know. Am I his keeper? Arrogant with his pastor. And I'm not talking about your pastor. No. In this story... Cain was arrogant with his pastor. His pastor was God. God was his pastor. Do you know one of the signs of a Christian that's heading in the wrong direction? Arrogance and pride. Scripture says that a wise man thinks with his mind. He thinks about it before he speaks it. But a fool gives full vent to his spirit. In other words, he doesn't have any filter. Anything he feels when he feels it, a foolish man just speaks it. Cain was being very foolish. God knew about his sin. God knew about everything he had done. God was the one that was warning him not to do it. But Cain didn't listen. And then God is asking him, where is your brother? Giving him a chance to repent. But what did he do? He got arrogant with God. Let me ask you a question. Are you getting arrogant with God? Are you getting prideful with God? Do you feel conviction in your heart? But then you say, no, it's not my fault. It's their fault. No, God, you put them in my life. No, God, but you're the one that put me here. No, God, but you control everything, God, and, and your hand is in everything. So that means that you're the one letting this happen, the Lord. So you should know, God, it's your fault that I'm feeling like this, God. Are you getting arrogant with the Lord? If you are, repent. Because that's not your place. Your place is to humble yourself and ask him for strength. And ask him to wash you and to cleanse you. So look what happens here. We find out why Cain killed his brother Abel. 1 John chapter 3, verse 11 through 12. This is why he was an evil man from the Bible. The reason that Cain killed his brother Abel was because instead of repenting of his own sin 
Every time he would see Abel, he would remember, I'm rejected by God. God didn't accept me. God rejected my offering. And every time Cain would see Abel walking by, he would remember how far he was from the Lord, how much of a relationship that he did not have with God. He would remember and he would get bitter and he would get angry. Every time he would see Abel walking back and forth with his sheep, he would remember how Abel was accepted and he was rejected. And instead of letting that bring conviction to his life, and instead of him calling out for mercy and grace to God and saying, Lord, forgive me, Lord. I want to be accepted too. I, I, Lord, I, I want to be like my brother Abel. I want you to accept my gifts, Lord. Instead of him repenting and surrendering, you know what he does? He's the problem. Abel's the reason for the way I feel. Abel is the reason for my rejection. You know why he was an evil man from the Bible? Because instead of him looking deep into his own life, and instead of taking accounts for his own life, and instead of him being responsible between him one-on-one -on -one with God and taking accountability for his own sins and his own reactions and his own actions, he starts blaming everyone else. Do you know when we start being like Cain? When we start blaming the church, when we start blaming people, when we start blaming parents, when we start blaming society, and yes, when you even start blaming government, when you start blaming other people, we're being just like Cain. And what's the purpose of this video? So that we won't be like Cain. So we can learn from him and not be like him. What was his problem? Trusting in his works, not living a life of faith. Second, he rejected the conviction of the Lord. God was telling him sins at your heart. God was telling him, where is your brother? And he rejected both of them. He didn't listen. And the second time he got arrogant with God. And third, what was his problem? Instead of him taking accountability for his own actions, he started blaming his brother for the way he felt. Let me tell you, whenever anyone, relationship that they have with God, whenever there's a wedge between God and them, and they can feel it. People can feel when there's a wedge between them and God. Whenever there's a wedge between someone and the Lord, it's not because of someone else. It's because of that person. Maybe that person has a sin they need to repent of. Maybe that person has something in their heart they need to surrender to God. Maybe that person is being arrogant and prideful and they don't want to trust the Lord. Maybe that person doesn't want to believe in the Lord, doesn't want to hope in the Lord. But whenever there's a wedge, a man and a woman can't put a wedge between you and God. The devil can't even put a wedge between you and God. So let me ask you a question. If you're feeling that it's other people's faults for the way you feel, and I'm not saying that they didn't do something to you. I'm saying if you're feeling it's other people's faults for not having a relationship with God, that's not true. Our relationship with God is very personal. It's one-on-one. -on -one. And let's find out why Cain killed Abel. 1 John 3, 11 through 12. For this is the message that you have heard from the beginning that we should love one another. We should not be like Cain, who was of the evil one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his own deeds were evil and his brothers were righteous. The scripture is telling us, Cain killed Abel, not because of Abel. Cain killed Abel because his own deeds were evil and his brothers were righteous. Why is he an evil man from the Bible and what can we learn from him? Whenever a person has bitterness or hatred or anger or even, Lord forbid, murderous thoughts, hateful thoughts towards someone, it's not the person. Scripture says that those things come from the heart. So if those things are coming from the heart and that's what a person is feeling, what must that person do? Repent and ask God for forgiveness. And tell the Lord, Lord, wash me and cleanse me Purify my heart, Lord, and let go of those things. Surrender them to God. Do you know that Cain brought an offering of produce to the Lord? But do you know the offering that God really wanted from Cain? God really wanted Cain's heart. Bring your heart to God today and ask him to forgive you and wash you. Be accountable between you and the Lord, and he will accept you. You will be accepted.
I hope this video was a blessing to your life. If it was, do me a favor. If you're not subscribed, subscribe. I post weekly videos that I hope and pray will be a great blessing to your life. Don't forget, today was part one of Evil Men from the Bible. Turn on those notifications so that you can be alerted every day of this week. I'm going to be talking about several more evil men from the Bible, and you don't want to miss them. Those stories are very amazing, very interesting. We can learn a lot of things from those men. We can learn a lot of things of what not to do. So turn on your notifications so you can be alerted every time I post a brand new video. And also, if you want to show your appreciation for this channel or for this video, you can do so in one of two ways. The first way looks something like this. It's called Super Thanks. Super Thanks is a feature at the bottom of your screen, or when somebody tries to leave a comment, it pops up on the little corner of the comment box. Super Thanks are always a great blessing to my life. They are always greatly appreciated. Thank you for everyone who's, who shows their appreciation with a Super Thanks. I see them, and I appreciate them very much. They're a blessing to my life. The second way that you can show your appreciation, and this is on a monthly basis, the link is in my description, it's called Channel Memberships. Channel Memberships is $5 a month, about $1.25 a week, and when you become a channel member, you get special badges, special stickers, and access to archive videos that channel members have access to. I have tons of past live streams that channel members have access to. If that's something you're interested in, channel memberships are also a great blessing to my life. Like I said, the link is in the description. If that's something you're interested in, that is greatly appreciated. And do me a favor, before you click off, make sure you watch one of these videos popping up on your screen. I hope and I pray that they will continue to be a great blessing to your life. God bless you.